Welcome back to another Jazz Drummer Q-Tip of the Week. My name is Quincy Davis. The Q stands for Davis. No, I'm kidding. It stands for Quincy, of course. If you're new, thank you so much for checking out this channel, checking out this lesson. And if you like it, go ahead and press that like button. And please consider subscribing because I put out weekly lessons that many drummers have found helpful. And I think you will too. So in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to play odd meters with better flow and a sense of groove, a sense of pocket. And, you know, odd meters is one of those things that if you don't do it a lot, you're never going to feel comfortable. And in fact, you'll probably feel pretty intimidated um, and maybe a little bit anxious whenever you have to play in an odd meter. So that's what this lesson is for, is to help you feel more comfortable playing odd meters. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Are you ready? You ready, Rocco, Chen, Rita, Joel? Y'all ready? If you're ready, I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. All right, so the first Q-tip that I'm going to give you, yes, I said Q-tip. I'm going to give you eight. So you want to make sure you watch the whole thing because I know they're going to be really helpful to you. But the first Q-tip I'm going to give you is find the pocket. Uh, or more specifically, find a backbeat. Um, just put a backbeat in there somewhere. I'm going to be playing off of this handout that I will put on the screen, but you can also download for free from my website. I'll put the link down below. So I'm going to start out with the 7-4 A groove. Let's see what that sounds like. Here it is. Listen for that backbeat. hear it in the snare drum let's see what B sounds like oh see how it changes a little bit oh here's a C uh, uh. Oh, here's a D. Ah, oh, two backbeats. Oh, so kind of playing around with the backbeat will help you really. Kind of solidify the the odd time signature signature feel. Um, it'll help you feel the odd time, and it'll make it feel less odd because, of course, we associate a backbeat with four four. So it's gonna feel more familiar. Hey, I just want to make sure you're aware of my digital download store, where you can download lots of fun and useful play along tracks that I've designed exactly for you and for me, us drummers. And more specific to this lesson, there are two play-along packs that focus on odd meter playing, going from 5.8 to 7.8 all the way up to 13.8. It's a really great way to work on your odd meter playing. I highly recommend it, so check it out. Okay, so once you get comfortable putting a backbeat in an odd meter um, that you're playing, then you can start to break up the groupings that are on this handout that you can download for free down below. The link is there. Um, you're going to start to kind of move around the different groupings, play, play around with the different groupings. So um, let's just see what that sounds like. So, so yeah, I'll just play and, and see where it goes. So I'll start with the first grouping, and then we'll just kind of dance around. Also, it doesn't always have – you don't always have to put the snare drum where – the snare drum's falling and the bass drum where the bass drum's falling. So you can you can make it all bass drum or you can make it all snare drum or you can just kind of mix it up. So I'm just going to be mixing it up a little bit and see where it goes. So that's A, right? Just using that one, what if I just played all the bass drum? See? And then you can kind of fill in the holes with your left hand. 
Oh, now I'm playing with my left my left hand. See? See, I'm still playing off of A. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. You see what I was doing there? So I was breaking it up, um, keeping that same grouping of A, but breaking it up and orchestrating it differently. Um, and once you start doing that, then you can actually start to move it around. Let's take a different grouping. Uh, let's take B, all right? The 7-4-B groove. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right, this is how it's written. Now what if I go? Woo! That's funky. Now I'm moving around. Ah. Same grouping. So I'm just having a little fun now, right? You can see where that could go, though. If you just kind of hang out with each uh, grouping, man, it can take you to some fun places. So, so work on that. All right, so I've changed meters and I've changed fields to make a point. You should be able to play whatever the meter is. You should be able to play a straight version and a swung version, as long as the tempo is slow enough. So this is a, a swung five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, right? I can also play it straight. I'm using the same grouping. Just straightening out my, my eighth notes. And back to swing. One, two, three, four, five. 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 So you definitely want to work on playing straight and also swinging when you're playing odd meters because um, some songs require you to swing, some, strong, some songs require you to play straight, and you don't want to feel stuck and feel limited to only uh, one or the other. So definitely practice your odd meters with a straight feel and also a swung feel. All right, so this next tip was a game changer when I learned about it, and I think it's going to be a game changer for many of you. Um, so we've been going, I told you to find that back beat, right? Boom, bat, boom, 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 bat, boom. Now we're going to get away from that, and I want you to think big seven, okay? The time in the, the, the I guess, the meter, the pulse does not change. However, we're just going to open it up to big seven. So as opposed to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, we're going to be thinking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One measure of big seven is equal to two measures of small seven. Hopefully that's not too much for you to compute. I'm not great at math and I got it, so I know you can get it too. All right, so we're going to live in the big seven for, for a little bit and see what it sounds like. First, I'm going to start out with small seven. And then we're going to play big seven. One, two, three, four. Five. Right? Just establish it. Here we go. We're going to open up. One, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six. One, two, one, two three, four. One, two, uh, ooh. One, two, three. Ooh. Uh, two. And then back to small seven. Ooh. You see how that works? 
And the reason why this is really helpful, I think I, I said it before, but it just kind of opens up um, your playing and you can start to be a lot more expressive. You can create bigger phrases um, and you can access more grids, more rates, like slower, slower grids, specifically triplets. Um, so it will really open up your playing and it's especially great for soloing. When you have to solo over an odd meter, you can actually get away with playing um, big seven while everyone else is playing small seven. So practice that. All right, so now we're going to think small seven. And you're probably thinking, yeah, we've been thinking small seven the whole time. Yes, however, what I want you to do is put your metronome on big seven. So while I'm playing, I want you to count big seven, and I'm going to play in small seven. Okay, you're my metronome. <laughs> okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Don't lose this. Three, four, five, six, seven. You got it? Just follow my right hand or, the, or, or my hi hat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? And if you can do this and feel the small seven while everyone else is playing big seven or you're playing with a metronome that's on in a big seven, I'm telling you, it's going to make you much more um, kind of free with the meter. And in fact... This leads me to the next tip, which is be able to go back and forth. So we're going to mix and match. We're going to play two measures of small seven and then one measure of big seven. Okay. And think of that big seven like you're kind of soloing. You can play whatever you want. Let's, let's see what that sounds like. One, two, three, four. One. Big seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, one, two, three, four, five, six. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, one. One, two. Uh, okay, it's a really good exercise for you. Um, to practice going back and forth so that if something happens musically where you need to do that, maybe somebody implies one of those meters, you want to be able to go there comfortably while not losing your wherewithal. So the next tip I have for you is really, really important. Just like with everything else, you got to know what it sounds like. You got to know what's, what good drumming in odd meters sounds like. So you got to listen to drummers who do it really well. Drummers that come to mind include uh, uh, Bill Stewart, Marcus, Marcus Gilmore, Jonathan Pinson, right? Joe Dyson, uh, Max Roach, Tony Williams, all these great, great drummers, Justin Brown, so many great drummers, um, some who are older, some are newer, uh, Victor Lewis. Do you know who Victor Lewis is? He's one of the greats. Um, so you got to put it in your ears in order for it to come out. And I promise you, when you go to play odd meters the next time, it's going to sound like you actually know what you're doing. And the last tip I have for you is really, really, really important. And all it is, is to do it a lot. Every chance you get, play in an odd meter. Uh, yeah, maybe if you go to a jam session, most of, most of the songs are going to be in common time signatures, like 3, 4, or 4, 4. However, I suggest that you suggest playing at least one song in an odd time signature. And if you do that, you get more comfortable. And that way, when you actually have to do it on a gig or something, that anxiety... Um, and that kind of fright or, or intimidation of that meter is going to go away. And you're going to feel more comfortable and you'll be able to get straight to the music. Okay, so do it a lot and you're going to sound better. Promise.
All right, so that is the lesson on how to play odd meters with better flow and a sense of groove and pocket. Have fun with all of these different tips and experiment. See what kind of things you can come up with. See what kind of exercises you can come up with. Don't forget about that play along pack that I, I created that I know will be helpful to you. All right, so until the next time, keep swinging. Practice hard, but practice smart. Take care. Bye-bye.